after about a week, the temperatures stayed pretty constant around 72 and a half degrees. The relative humidity in the chamber is 35.8%. And down here, we, I don't know, have, have some water coming out. So it's not nearly as warm in the kiln as it is in summertime during the winter. And it's probably, it's been in the single digits here. And I'd say in this barn, it's probably in the low 30s to high 20s. The kiln looks like it stays about 40 degrees above whatever the ambient temperature is around the kiln. So um, that's pretty good without the heater. It's negative 12 out right now, so we'll go check the kiln, see how it's doing. After about three and a half weeks here, we're at 68 degrees and it's 23.8% uh, relative humidity on the inside. Again, this is just with the fan running. Give you an idea, the uh, temperature outside right now is below zero. And it's been very cold in Wisconsin the last several days, uh, even getting down to negative 40 degree wind chills. I'd say the temperature differential is about plus 40 degrees. So whatever the ambient temperature is around the kiln, it, you're gonna get about plus 40 degrees on the inside when you are just running the dehumidifier in the fan. Okay, here's what our stack looks like right now. Those look like our bufferns drying out. Might do a little moisture meter test. I don't have the best moisture meter in the world. You can see that 11.7-ish on to 12, mid 12s on the handle for the door. And this is really old oak. It's dried, but it's on the outside of the kiln underneath the plastic. So it actually has a higher moisture um, than inside the kiln. And I can't even get this thing to register on any of the wood. So I'm trying all these different spots and corners and um, nothing. So at the ends here, I'm getting like five, five percent maybe. Okay, on the big one, 7.9 on the outside here. But anything else I try, I don't get, I don't get any readings. I noticed this one didn't really bend or split or anything, and it's not registering any moisture either. Trying to even go into one of these gaps and there's nothing. Oh, it's really dry. Um, what I'm going to do though, is I'm going to put this into a sanitize cycle now. Turn on my little heater here and get it up to about 150 degrees. You just have to hit set. We're going to pick the temperature, which the heater will cut out. I'll just put it up to 150. I hit set and it kicks on. So now the heater's running on the inside and we'll go up to 150 and we'll shut off. So it is time to shut down my sanitized cycle. As you can see this plastic, what it does is it traps the moisture and it condenses on the plastic here and you get a lot of the water running down um, which means there's some air gaps inside my box that uh, get out let let that steamy air out and so the chamber stays dry but the moisture has a way to get out i'm, I'm going to be moving this kiln and i may try to rebuild it to make it a little tighter than it is, but currently it does pretty well. So the weather we've been having has really put this kiln to the test. It's been at least 10 days now straight of below zero, sometimes um, negative 40 wind chills, negative uh, 14 degrees regular temp um, consistently for the last couple days here. 
and this is in an unconditioned space. So I'm getting good results. My sanitize isn't able to get up to the 140, 150 like I want. At least it, it's taking a while to get there. So after a day, it's up to 120. And I think I'm just gonna shut it down, um, save on some energy, and because I just uh, wanna get this wood out of here to start working on it. I think it's plenty dry, and most of this is going to the tree house. So I don't care about it too much. Um, it's not being used for furniture or anything like that. And I'm excited to see what the buckthorn looks like. So let's get this stuff unloaded. I'm gonna shut this thing down finally. The heater was running for one day and it went from 68 degrees to 120 degrees in one day. And it's just a little tiny 500 watt heater. So it's not, not, very, not very big. And this is a pretty big kiln here. So I'm just gonna take everything out. lots of moisture on this that condenses on the inside of the plastic here and drips down I think I think that's good so I'm my brain tells me that that's it's better that it we trapped all that warm air inside here and the moist air is vented out from the chamber and it drips and condenses and drips on the floor so it saves a little bit on dehumidifying that air but the downside is you get some moisture on the outside of your kiln now i built this whole thing with waterproof stuff so there's the foam which has water on it right now and then if that gets wet it doesn't matter um and if this heat thing gets wet it doesn't matter this is oak and it's old and it gets a little wet but it dries out pretty quickly and this is old scrap wood so if i have to replace this I will but this is really the only stuff on the outside that's underneath the plastic that could you know rot or something if it gets um, wet consistently I would recommend highly to use foam and not fiberglass or anything like that that can absorb water put this over here whoo that is very warm in here, uh, very warm. So 120 degrees feels amazing when it's 10 below outside right now. One of the big things that I found difficult when making a kiln was what kind of door to use and how to have a door that you can open and close and load things in big enough to get logs through um, and, and big lumber, but is also easy to seal. So. I tried to do this as simple as I could and as lightweight as I could because this is an eight by four door. And if you made it out of heavy material, it would be really hard to lift on here or have hinges or things like that. Um, this thing probably weighs, I don't know, it's probably maybe 20, 30 pounds. It's not very heavy, it's just really big. Um, but if you really wanted to get crazy with your door system, you probably do something better than these bolts that I've got pulled through. I mean, this is the simplest solution I came up with. I didn't think about it too long, but learning more about energy efficiency and things like that, having a large metal bolt like this that goes through the outside, inside the chamber, um, it can transfer quite a bit of heat through this these metal bolts. Um, so that'll lower your efficiency a little bit. So, after cranking up the heat in here, I see my first crack on the big piece of buckthorn. As far as other things, I think I see a just a in check here cracking. Um, and on the bigger stuff, I would expect it to crack when you heat it up. Um, it'll crack more there's a lot more movement in this big chunk and there's also a lot more water in these big ones um, the rest of it was pretty dry when it came in so there's very little in splitting on these one by boards this piece of buckthorn here actually 
did not really move much at all, which is surprising. There's a little bit of curl here on the end, but this is a very thin piece at the end. So it, it's almost like nothing on the very end. So I expect a lot of movement there. Okay, so I got all the silver maple out, stacked. That stuff will be going into the treehouse. Here's a couple of really large slabs from that silver maple that are one by that I was gonna do something with in the treehouse too. So these are over 30 inches across. Um, so they're just one by, one by uh, slabs. So one of them has a piece of metal in it that I hit. So this is kind of the junkier log of the silver maple. Let's go over here and take a look at the buckthorn now that we have it out of here. So I will say I'm pretty impressed with how well this dried. Not really much splitting at all. The splitting up here was from the shear. When I when you squeeze this wood, it, it splits. So I'll probably cut across right down here by the crotch area to, um, you know, cut off these ends. So I'm not getting, again, I'm not getting any moisture readings on these boards that came out of here. So I don't know if leaving it in long made a difference or what, but on the three inch thick slab of buckthorn, I did get a very small reading when I measured like in the crotch area where there was some bark inclusion. I got like a 5% reading, so really not much, but I know my moisture meter is not very good. <clears throat> but here's what I wanted to show you. With this buckthorn, I noticed, I've never noticed this before uh, because I've never dried it, uh, but there's all this like, it almost looks like hair on the inside of the bark layer. And I'm guessing this stuff has to do with how much uh, water it's able to pump up from the ground. Maybe one of the reasons why it grows so fast, but it's very stringy, almost like a grass or something. And for reference, here's a piece of silver maple, um, the bark layer with the underside, no strings at all. Um, and I know they're completely different families, but this stuff grows really fast too. So yeah, I just thought this was really cool, This all this stringy stuff here. I never, never noticed that before when I've cut it. But, but once it's dry, you can really, really see it. So I have to look up why that is. So I cut off the ends with my miter saw. And what I've noticed is this wood burns very quickly. So you have to be very quick with the saw. So here's this side. I flip it over. I took this cut really slow um, and it burns, it burns pretty fast. But I will say the finish is really nice. Um, you can tell this stuff fin will, will probably finish up nice. It almost looks like, if you're familiar with bamboo, it looks like almost like wood that's similar to bamboo um, in consistency in the grain pattern, at least on the end grains here. So now I'm gonna try to run this through a planer So I just ran the buckthorn here through the joiner and I did not sand it at all. Likewise, this is a piece of cherry. It's a quarter sawn piece. And then here is a you know, flat sawn piece of walnut, black walnut. All of them have been run through a planer or the joiner and there's a, a light coat of the sanding sealer on them just to kind of highlight the grains and just wanted to show a comparison of all three of these next to each other so you can kind of get an idea of what buckthorn looks like when it's cleaned up um gotta say it's pretty impressive stuff there's a lot of rich colors in it and i wonder how it will hold up over time like with fading and things like that um for more comparison here. Here's a piece of the buckthorn that was cut off before it was put through the jointer. So yeah, you can see a big difference here between all these. Very, it's very pretty. And there's that 
real iridescence to it. It's sort of like with the cherry here too, you can kind of see, especially quarter sawn cherry. So I don't know. Tell me what you think in the comments, uh, whether this stuff's worth it or not. I, I'm actually pretty impressed. Once it's cleaned up, it looks, it looks really good. Hoping you guys can see it all right with the lighting here and the angles of the camera. It's pretty shiny right now because it's that joiner does a really good job. It's a helical, does a nice job of leaving a good finish. But yeah, this is not, not sanded at all. Neither, none of these are sanded. So what I plan to do is leave this on the workbench here for a while, just indoors. I'm not going to put any weight on it and I'm going to see how it dries. So this is a, this is the unfinished side. I got that up and then the joint side is down. So that's about as flat as it gets. So I'm going to take it and put it on a flat surface and then I'll see how much this stuff moves over time. So I'll put that in a follow up video. So yeah, if you enjoyed, like and subscribe. This has been a fun project. It's a lot of work for a little tree. This is about as big as they get. So, But when you put them up here next to some really fancy stuff like quarter sawn cherry and black walnut, you can see that it looks, looks pretty good in comparison. Thanks, everybody.